Hello everyone, this is Simpsons Hidden Run, basically how to use the mod launcher. This guide will hopefully guide you into learning how to use the mod launcher and get Simpsons Hidden Run running and working on your computer, ready to go. So you may have just installed the game via whatever means you did. You might have the application, like right here. But when you go to click it to load it, this sort of issue happens. The game appears to be starting up in the native resolution, but it freezes. And there's nothing that you can really do about it. Often it, it won't even work, and it may even crash. Case in point. So you may be thinking, how can I actually play the game? How can I speedrun it? Well, the way to do that is to actually get a mod launcher and the mod launcher actually stabilizes the game and allows it to run on current Windows versions. So in order to actually do that, you're going to go to this link here, Lucas's Simpsons Hidden Run Mod Launcher, and download the latest version, 1.23.12. We'll just put it onto our desktop for now. And it's done. Okay, so once you open the mod launcher, you should get a nice little screen like this. Usually if you have some other mods like the randomizer, multiplayer mod, etc, they'd appear here. What we want to do to run the game is to come here. First step is in order to actually run it, you're going to need to go to the launcher settings, go to game here, and browse and find the executable for your Simpsons game. Generally it'll be in the Simpsons hidden run folder and it will just basically be the app you use to load the game. Once you've assigned that, you'll be on the main screen, you can decide what mods you want to use to run the game. Now there's actually a whitelist of allowed mods for the speedrun, and I will include a link to that list in the description. But more importantly, I'm going to go through some of them and explain what they actually do. So to start off with, aspect ratio and bug fixes, they're both on by default, you're going to need to turn them off if you want to actually speed run the game. Aspect ratio support allows you to change the aspect ratio without stretching out the screen. What that means is, is that it actually increases your own field of vision in the game. Now this isn't allowed in speed runs because you could have a five monitor setup and stretch the game across all five of those monitors and get a huge field of view. Obviously that's an unfair advantage, so that mod for that particular reason is not allowed in speedruns. So I said before that um, I said before the aspect ratio support isn't allowed because it increases your field of vision, even though it can change the aspect ratio from 4x3 to conventional monitor sizes like 16x9. Letterbox is the speedrun allowed way of changing your aspect ratio. By ticking letterbox and going to mod settings, you can actually change the aspect ratio to your 16x9. The reason I say to use Letterbox is because what Letterbox does to change the aspect ratio is it stretches the game out. So it doesn't increase your field of vision, it stretches the game to compensate for it. I personally have this off because I use 4x3 anyway, but it doesn't actually matter if you have it on or off. The game is jokingly said to be held together by sticky tape and glue, and there's a lot of small bugs in this game. This mod sort of acts to fix those bugs, but in turn affects aspects of the speedrun. Because of these reasons, it's also banned for speedruns, so make sure that this one is also off. So these two are the only default ones that are banned by the speedruns, so make sure to turn these off immediately if you're going to consider speedrunning the game. Now I'm going to go into a bit more depth in some of the more important mods. Frame limiter is the big one I want to talk about. So basically, like a lot of old games, Simpsons Hidden Run's physics is linked to its frame rate. Now, without the frame limiter on, the game will run in an unlimited FPS, or basically as high an FPS as your computer can handle. But because of that, it's often inconsistent, and because FPS is tied to the physics, you'll find that the physics would be really inconsistent. So what you want to do to actually set it, is go to your mod settings, and here you can actually set what you want the frame limit to be. I've got it set for 142, but common ones that are actually set for speedruns are 144, 
150, 100, and 60. Vapo, 41, and other Simpson Sin Run speedrunners have compiled a document describing the differences between each FPS. If you're playing this just casually and you've come from the console versions, I'd recommend actually starting at 60. But if you're keen to actually speedrun the game, it might be best to start at a higher FPS like 144 or 150. Now what we have down here is the method. There are various methods on how the game can actually limit your frame rate. Waitable time will be the default. It's also relatively inaccurate, hence I've used 142 here. 142 and a waitable timer gives me a 144. But if you want it to be accurate, I'd recommend either sleep and busy wait or busy wait. So if I set it at 150 and sleep and busy wait, I would get a nice consistent 150 FPS. The next main mod that I want to talk about is down here. Uh, where is it? Rebindable menu gamepad inputs. This one isn't on by default, but I strongly recommend turning it on. Simpsons in Run lets you bind a lot of buttons on your controller to a lot of different functions in the game. One thing it doesn't let you rebind in-game is the accept button in menus and the pause button. For years, the speedrunning community had to use external programs to map the controller to the pause button because there was just no in-game way to do that. But since later releases of the mod launcher, they actually created a mod that lets you rebind it. In order to do so, you want to go to mod settings. The accept input, the primary, is going to be just essentially your A button, your accept in menus. Now, I wouldn't recommend actually trusting the buttons listed next to these, because these are set up for an Xbox controller, I believe. So what's important to actually do is just to set the button, load up the game and try it out and see if it's actually the right one. So unfortunately it's a little bit of trial and error to find the right button. Well over here, back input is obviously your back button. Now down here, you can set another button to also act as the back button. On my controller, this would be the options button on the PS4 controller. Once you've selected a secondary button, you'll want to tick pause with secondary. This means that this button will actually be rebound to your pause button. It will also act as a back button like almost all pause buttons do in games. I'd really recommend taking a look and choosing the buttons that you want because the game doesn't always give good buttons for these, in particular the pause button. Okay, the next one that I want to look at is no cursor until mouse moves. I'd also recommend turning this one on. What this basically does is when you pause the game, it means that the mouse won't appear on screen unless you actually move it. The reason why this is important is because now let's say you're mashing to try and get up through cutscene skip. You manage to pause, but because this mod isn't on, your mouse is over exit program. You go down, thinking that you're going down to mission select, but really you've accidentally just hit continue and unpaused. Next one I want to talk about is Direct 3D9. If you have a NVIDIA GPU, this one is definitely worth turning on. Simpsons Hidden Run uses Direct3D7, which is no longer supported by a number of NVIDIA GPUs. By turning this on, the game will run using Direct3D9, which is compatible with these GPUs. This ensures that the game will run on your actual NVIDIA graphics card, rather than potentially another GPU, overall improving performance. One that is only going to be useful for some people and not for others is X input down here. Now most controllers utilize direct input to register various inputs, however Xbox controllers generally use X input rather than direct input, and the game doesn't recognize that by default. By turning on X input, you're going to allow your Xbox controller to actually work and for the game to register X input. So if you've loaded up the game and your controller doesn't actually seem to be responding, it might be worth turning this one on. So now I'm just going to sort of go through some of the other default mods, starting with hover car refraction, lens flare, and sphere maps. They change the appearance of the game slightly, however none of these actually affect the gameplay at all, so it's entirely preference if you'd like to leave them on, turn them off, or either. Anti-aliasing is another one. This one isn't actually a default, but it can actually assist improving the appearance of the game overall. However, unlike the other three, 
it can actually affect performance. If your computer and GPU aren't actually powerful enough, it can slow down the game and cause overall is performance issues. So I'd recommend if you're seeing performance issues in the game and you've got anti-aliasing turned on, just turn it off. So two other mods that I'd like to talk about briefly are borderless and resizable window. If you want to play windowed, you don't want to be using resizable window. That lets you resize the window, move it around, and overall makes it much easier to play in windowed mode. Borderless gets rid of that top part of a window and lets you actually experience it in a nice, beautiful full screen. So make sure to tick whichever of those two goes with how you're playing the game. So, we've set up all our mods, we're feeling like we're ready to go. All that's left is to start the game. Down here, if you're playing in windowed mode, you'll tick windowed. And I'd recommend clicking, uh, not clicking close launcher. What this does is once the game launches, the launcher itself just closes off. No need to keep it open, right? The game's working. Not quite. Though the mod launcher does stabilize the game, it isn't a 100% fix. I've personally found that about 1 in 5 to 1 in 10 times, the game will still crash even if you use the mod launcher. So it's worth actually just not ticking that in case the game that actually does crash. That way you can quickly just try again and it will work the next time. There are, various, there are various other mods here that can change the game, alter it and overall make it either enjoyable, less enjoyable, harder or easier. I'd recommend taking a look through these in your own time and trying them out a little bit. None of these other mods though are allowed by the speedrun. The last thing to do before launching the game is to set what size window you want the game to appear in. If you're playing full screen, set it to the resolution of your window of your monitor, which will most often be 1920 by 1080. If you want a smaller window because you want other things to appear on your screen, you can set it for 1400 by 1050 or various other sizes. I'd recommend playing around with these different sizes and choosing one that actually works with you. Once you're done, you just click launch and the game will start up. So either way, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. And if you do want to join the Simpsons Hidden Run Speedrunning Discord, I'll also include a link to that in the description below. That'll help you with any other finer details about the setup that I couldn't cover in this video. Until then, thank you for watching. Best of luck playing or speedrunning.